Drummers Against Implied Timekeeping. Why is Keith Moon great? Uh, if there was ever a question for drummers to discuss, uh, I think that's an interesting one, and I want to share with you some of my perspectives on the drummer of The Who. Uh, this is my opinion, so as a disclaimer, I ask that you just bear with me on discussing the uh, situation with Keith Moon. Now, Keith Moon was the drummer from, with The Who from 1964 to 1978, when he passed away suddenly. Now, in those 14 years uh, that he was with The Who, they were probably one of the biggest bands in the world. Now, uh, anyone who's coming onto my channel for the very first time knows that I'm teaching, and I'm teaching some very technical things regarding playing in the open-handed position, uh, I go through the stick control book, and I kind of teach in a kind of unique way. And my perspectives are mostly based on technique and sound and timekeeping. Uh, and when you discuss someone like Keith Moon, uh, everything is thrown out with the kitchen sink because he has nothing to do with technical playing. He has nothing to do with almost anything to do with drums in the sense that if you were to explain Keith Moon, it would be just about impossible. Uh, but there's a couple things I want you to know about Keith Moon that I think apply to every drummer, whether you're the most uh, learned and schooled technical player or you've never picked up a pair of drumsticks. What really makes this guy great? And I mean great. Now, I have issues with him on the technical side. Uh, because he was never schooled in the art of drumming. Uh, he doesn't know the first thing about rudiments. He could care less about those sort of things. He was just basically sat at the drum set, heard what the band was playing, and played to it. And this is what, uh, uh, when you have two forces coming together, um, creativity and circumstances. And that's what he represents as a drummer. He sat at the drum set one night on a gig with The Who in 1964, and just had at it, and they were just completely shocked at some of the things he was doing. His uh, ability to play flashy and uh, uh, just incite the audience and the band. And this is the first thing I want to bring out about Keith Moon. When he sat in with The Who, he did something that most drummers forget about, and that is to inspire and spark the other musicians because the drummer is the kind of the core of the energy of a band. He's the soul, the heartbeat of the band. And that's what he did that was really great. And I want to instill in every young drummer, regardless of your technical ability, is to inspire the others around you to do better, to do better and to become the heartbeat of that band and whatever you're doing. And I don't care if you're in a huge symphony orchestra or concert band or even a drum line, whatever you're doing, uh, bring energy to the table. And that's something he really did in spades all the time. Even though he was high on drugs, drunk as could possibly be, um, he brought that into the who. The other thing that I want to stress about Keith Moon that just shocks me, I want you to go on and watch the Isle of Wight Festival that the Who played in 1969 or 1970. Um, besides the band being at their peak of their powers, they were tremendous live. Um, there's one shot, a long shot of Keith Moon, which he takes a bag of sticks out of his bag, and every quarter note he hits the floor tom, it goes flying, he takes another stick out, hits the floor tom, it goes flying. It, it is hysterically funny. No one in the world has done it before or since. It'll never be done by anybody else again. He just takes one stick, one stick, one stick, and they're flying off the floor top. He must have gone through like 10 boxes of sticks at the time. And I bring it up only for the fact that um, this is the idea of how he thought about drums. He saw drums uh, as a, an extension of, of um, his theatrics. And that, and the, the band he was in, was perfect. And this is something that is absolutely essential for a lot of drummers to understand. Um, the drummer is usually looked at by a lot of people. So he has to be somewhat of a showman. 
And there were a lot of showmen in the 40s and 50s. Uh, Gene Krupa comes to mind, the first showman on drums. And then there was Sonny Payne uh, in the late 50s, early 60s, another fantastic uh, showman who played with Count Basie. And of course, Buddy Rich was a showman as well. Uh, but it wasn't until 1964 in rock that Keith Moon came in and he just broke all those barriers. He became the ultimate showman. And that is important, and that's what makes him great. So I want you to go on Isle of Wight Festival, 1970, and watch that set. Watch Keith Moon play that set. You could sit there and say, well, you know, the parts are not that technically challenging. Um, uh, they sound sloppy and these various technical things, which is true. But what he lacks in that aspect, he makes up for it in other things. And this is the, some, the thing that made me want to do this video, to inspire younger drummers to study, get technically better, but to also understand Keith Moon. Because without that, then you become some sort of a, a time machine that's kind of a bore, and you don't want to do that. Now, special note, um, Keith Moon, as far as his recordings, um, he's on, if when you think about it, a lot of great tracks with The Who. Just about everything on Who's Next. 1971 album uh, is a milestone, but um, I would say a, a bargain would be something you really want to listen to if you haven't heard that. A fantastic track for drums because he's playing extremely creative. Um, and mind you, this is kind of spontaneous, so a bargain is definitely something you want to listen to uh, to really stand out on the recording of Keith Moon and his greatness. Um, I've always had issues, obviously, on the technical side, but you know what? It doesn't matter what I think on the technical side. Did he bring something to The Who that made The Who great? Yes. Uh, did he bring something to the table that made in, and inspired other musicians and drummers? Definitely, yes. That's what makes Keith Moon great, all right? If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask me on twitter.com forward slash Drummers Against, Facebook.com forward slash Drummers Against Implied Timekeeping. I want to thank all of you for coming into my channel, if you haven't visited for the first time, to go and see my entire catalog. Uh, to understand that the things that I'm teaching are technical in nature, but they're to inspire your independence, your power, and in tribute to Keith Moon, your creativity, which is something he really shined with. So, uh, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel because your subscription is the support that I need to continue. And I have a lot of things coming up that are on the technical side. But I have other videos. Why is John Bonham great? Uh, why is Ringo great? Why isn't Peter Chris great? And various other views of other drummers uh, from a historical perspective. But I want to kind of give you my uh, perspective on it because of the specifics of my experience. I just don't want to say someone is great because I think he's great. I think there's reasons behind their greatness, and it should be pinpointed, such as with this video on Keith Moon. So I thank you for looking in. Hopefully you agree. If you disagree, uh, that's okay as well. Uh, but I want to hear from you, and I look forward to seeing what you think. And uh, keep me posted, and I've got, uh, as I say, a lot of things coming up on the technical side. So my best to all of you looking in and keep drumming at all times, all right? Take care.